Greetings, today is Monday, August 11, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video, I will be talking about the newly formed tropical storm Aaron, which has developed to the northwest of the Cape Verde Islands and is associated with what was Invest 97. Unfortunately, what was Invest 97 brought heavy downpours and flooding across the Cape Verde Islands, where some loss of life was reported due to flash floods. Now the fifth tropical storm of the season has maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour, and it is forecast to continue with its generally westward movement for at least the next four days, until eventually beginning to turn more toward the northwest. And although it is expected to pass to the northeast of the Caribbean, there is still uncertainty as to what effects it could bring to the local region. In the long term, once it moves over the southwestern Atlantic, atmospheric conditions could be very favorable for it to strengthen into a major hurricane. So everything seems to indicate that Tropical Storm Aaron will be the first hurricane of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season. If we zoom in on the infrared satellite animation, here we have Tropical Storm Aaron, which continues pulsing the area of convection, as expected, since it is still moving over ocean surface temperatures that are not yet very warm, it is also surrounded by some dry air. However, the tropical storm is accompanied by a moisture field that protects the circulation center from this dry, stable air. Specifically, what I mean is that over the next two to three days it will be moving through an atmosphere that is not necessarily very favorable for rapid strengthening. So it is projected to remain a tropical storm until at least Wednesday morning. And I briefly wanted to mention that there is another strong tropical wave emerging from Africa. And conditions continue to be very favorable for strong tropical waves to emerge from Africa, making it very likely that Tropical Storm Aaron is only the start of the formation of additional cyclones over the next two weeks. In fact, the National Hurricane Center, in its latest forecast for Tropical Storm Aaron, encourages people to review their emergency plans as we approach the peak of the season. If we look at the most recent track projections, you can see there continues to be good consensus that Tropical Storm Aaron will move generally westward with a slight southwestward component over the next 48 hours. It should then begin to turn more toward the west-northwest, and between Saturday and Sunday, when it is at its closest point to the Caribbean, it should begin to turn more toward the northwest and north. So in the long term, it may approach the island of Bermuda, making it important to continue monitoring its evolution. In the next animation, we can see how ocean surface temperatures change as Tropical Storm Aaron moves westward. You can see that although at the moment it remains over ocean surface temperatures near 26 degrees Celsius, once it crosses longitude 45 degrees west, it will begin moving over increasingly warmer waters. And this is why from Wednesday or Thursday, it is anticipated to strengthen into the first hurricane of the season. That is precisely what the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center has, a west, west, southwest movement until at least Wednesday afternoon. By the early hours of Thursday, it could reach Category 1 hurricane strength, while it is forecast to continue gradually strengthening, and there is the possibility that by Saturday afternoon it could already be a major hurricane. Specifically, the National Hurricane Center projects it to be Category 3 with maximum sustained winds of 115 miles per hour. Also, in this official forecast, you can see that the cone of uncertainty currently remains to the north and northeast of the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico, meaning that for the moment there is no risk of direct impact. However, depending on how close it passes to the region, strong swells could affect some of the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, and perhaps also bring an increase in humidity and rainfall eventually. In the long term, it may encounter very favorable conditions to continue strengthening in the southwestern Atlantic. In fact, see the infrared satellite projection from the American model, which depicts a very powerful hurricane moving north of Puerto Rico, possibly a hurricane with characteristics of a major hurricane. However, this is only to show you what the future hurricane airing structure might look like. Since it is a long-range forecast, we still do not know exactly how close or far it could pass from the Bahamas, the eastern United States, and Bermuda. So, as I mentioned a few days ago, I ask for a lot of patience because throughout the week we will continue discussing the movement and forecast of Tropical Storm Aaron. Let's see what the latest projections from the global models show. Starting with the American model, it keeps Tropical Storm Aaron as a tropical storm until at least Thursday morning and eventually begins to turn it toward the west-northwest, passing about 250 to 300 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles. By Saturday night, it shows a Category 2 hurricane heading toward the waters of the southwestern Atlantic, strengthening over the weekend. On the other hand, the European model shows a very similar scenario, the west-west-southwest movement at least until Wednesday and from Thursday it begins to turn toward the west-northwest until eventually passing about 250 to 300 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles by early Sunday. In this case, 
The European model has a Category 1 hurricane moving through the region but strengthening as it moves over warm waters and a very favorable atmosphere in the southwestern Atlantic, so much so that in the long term, between Monday and Tuesday of next week, it also shows a Category 3 hurricane in this region. Additionally, the German model also projects a very similar track, in this case passing over 300 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles as a strong tropical storm. There continues to be consensus with the other models as well. The UK model has a track well to the northeast of the Caribbean at a fairly safe distance, as does the track projection from Google's artificial intelligence model, which projects that on Sunday afternoon it will pass at its closest point about 250 miles northeast of the Virgin Islands. So we really continue with a good degree of confidence in the projections, where although initially it could have a slight southwestward component and lose a little latitude, it should eventually make that turn that would keep the cyclone away from the northeastern Caribbean. But from the weekend onward there is a large margin of error with different scenarios, from a track well to the north over open Atlantic waters to other tracks moving over parts of the southwestern Atlantic. Of course, it is always important to continue watching how much latitude it loses over the coming days in case the tracks shift a little closer to the northeastern Caribbean, potentially bringing stronger swells or increased rainfall. I can tell you in advance that for the islands of the northern Lesser Antilles, the north coast of Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic, Strong swells and rip currents may affect the region from Friday and extend into early next week. This is the projection from the European Model Ensemble, which also matches very well with the projection from the American Model Ensemble, that generally westward track for the next three to four days, and from day five to six, beginning to gain latitude in a west-northwest direction, passing without directly affecting the northeastern Caribbean. However, the National Hurricane Center itself is asking residents of the Northeastern Caribbean to remain alert in case of any unexpected changes, although the probabilities of it staying northeast of the region are currently very high, and there is confidence in this forecast because we have consensus among the top models. Well, that's all for this forecast update. Tomorrow afternoon I will record another video to update the forecast. For now, there is no reason to worry. Simply remain watchful in the Northeastern Caribbean, the Bahamas, the Eastern United States, and the Island of Bermuda. Thank you very much for watching this video, and before I go, I'd like to ask you to like this video. Also, subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. I hope you all have an excellent night. See you tomorrow.